The first data structure we're going to look at is a fixed size array. This is a fundamental data structure that is the basis for many others. As this is the first data structure that we consider, we also go over the basic model of computation we will be using to analyze the time complexity of operations. We're going to start with the abstract data type for a fixed size array. We just have three operations. We can create a fixed size array, specifying its capacity, that is how many elements it can hold. We can access elements of a fixed size array by their index or position in the array. So we can get the value of the ith item in the array by calling a function get with the argument i. We can also modify the ith element of the array with a function called set, which takes an index i and the value x that we want to set the ith element of the array to be. So these are our three operations. We can create an array, we can get the value of the ith element, and we can set the value of the ith element. So next we want to talk about a data structure implementing the fixed size array abstract data type and the complexity of the get and set operations in that data structure. In order to do this, we need to say something about the model of computation we are using. We are not going to be very formal here or go into a lot of details. We are just going to list some basic operations that we assume that our computer can do quickly in constant time. We think of the, com of the memory of the computer as a very long tape divided into cells or words. Each word is a small contiguous chunk of memory. You can think of a word as being one byte or eight bits, but this level of detail won't really matter for us. Each word has an integer address giving its location on the tape. So you see here in the picture, I have labeled the words with their addresses, 0, 1, 2, up to 19 in this example. So this way we can refer to, for example, the tenth word in the memory and go look at that cell in the tape and read what is written there. We're going to make three assumptions about this model of, of our computer. The first is that we have random access to the memory. This means that we can read or write to any word in constant time, given its address. The second is that we can allocate or free a block of memory, a contiguous group of words, in constant time. So allocating memory is basically just designating a block of memory as taken so it is not used by other processes. So it's just saying, hey, I'm using this memory. Uh, nobody else can use it. Uh, I'm reserving this block of memory right now. Finally, we assume that we can do arithmetic operations on addresses in constant time. So for example, from a given address, we may want to add 10 to it to find the address of the 10th word after it. So we assume that this kind of operation we can do in constant time. Here's our implementation of a fixed size array. To simplify things, we assume that the items that we are storing in the array fit inside a single word. I'm sure you'll see how to modify things if each element takes instead, say, for four words of memory. For the example, it just makes it simpler if each item of the array just takes a single word of memory. So to implement the creation of an empty array that can hold n items, what we do is allocate a contiguous block of n words. So in the example here, we are allocating 12 words from location 53 to 64. So by our second rule, this allocation takes constant time. So it's important to no note that we're not writing anything to these 12 words. All we're, all we're doing at this point is just reserving these 12 words, saying, hey, I want to use these 12 words so no other process uh, uses them. If we were initializing each word to some particular value, then of course doing that would take time proportional to the number of words being allocated. All we want to do here is just allocate enough memory to store n items. So this memory is not initialized, it just holds whatever values were written there before. 
To implement the get and set operations, we're going to store the address of the first element of the array. So in this example, the address of the first element of the array is 53. From the address of the first element of the array, we can find the address of any other element in the array. So say that size of type here is the number of words taken up by the type of the elements in the array. Again, for simplicity, just assume that this is one. Then the address of the ith item in the array is simply the address of the first item plus i times the size of the type being stored. By rule number three, in constant time, we can perform this addition and multiplication to compute the address of the ith element. Then by rule one, we can read or write to this address in constant time as well. So this shows how we can implement get and set in constant time. So here's the summary of the fixed size array data type. We can do three operations, create an empty array of a specified size, get the ith element of the array, and write to the ith element of the array. And we've seen how we can implement all of these operations in constant time.